Origin Transformers Reaction. Origin Transformers Reaction. This is why was this plane invulnerable? The SR-71 Blackbird story by Charles Mustard. I saw the F-15 video from Mustard. He talked about uh, the Russian, uh, you know, Russian plane, which I already knew about because I watched in one of the videos, like how it was like this, you know. Uh, mystical type of weapon for americans because they didn't know what the hell was that and they just emptied up uh no they didn't empty it up the intel said they're supposed to be all this right it's supposed to be this powerful and uh f4 that us had was not uh, even close to that so they needed to make another you know plane that is better than that and they made it f15 it was so good than this the other soviet plane that it was just like you know point blank better then they realized the soviet plane wasn't even close to what it was claiming to be so they beat out a fantasy plane plane that wasn't even existed right they beat that out which is like insane and i know you know blackbird sr-71 spe special reconnaissance so i'm guessing this is like uh you know like spy type of plane right because nowadays that's the role of satellites and things like that on drones but back then it was like blackbird so you know this is one of the most like you know famous plane right this this right here look at that how you know it's like it's like a lego type of thing like three tubes stuck together that's how it looks right this is a, that kind of like a awesome design everybody knows of this uh you know this is like the if there is a one plane the entire planet knows about even if they don't care about any of this type of stuff they would know blackbird that's the word everybody knows blackbird it was that level of good now, I don't know if it because it was that fast or what it was. Like, it was just untouchable. That's how fast it was. Reason why it was like 5,000 miles per hour or something, which is like really high, right? After 6,000, you cross the territory of like so hypersonic type of thing. So, it was really, really fast. And it's a reconnaissance. It's not supposed to fight anybody. So, it just needed to go fast and nothing else. So, th this is why it was like untouchable. If, 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 as far as I remember, like nobody had any answer to this. And they just like decommissioned it because now they have like drones and satellites. Why do they need it? So yeah, that's why it's one. I always assume like they must have another plane. They, they are not telling anybody. They're just keeping it secret. That's why they saw Blackbird. Because that was the case with the B-2 bomber, if I remember correctly. Nobody, they didn't tell anybody like what this is. Everybody just assumed it's like some alien UFO. Before they realized, no, it was our plane. But we kept it a secret. I always assumed that. But then people told me like, wait a minute, there are drones and satellites. They don't need a spy plane anymore. So I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. So let's go this one. Thanks to Squarespace for making this video possible and for helping launch my new mustard store. More on that after this video. In the midst of the Cold War, two MiG-25s race to intercept the threat along the Soviet border. They're the fastest interceptors ever built, and if they really push their engines, they can reach an incredible Mach 3.2. But it's not enough because what they're chasing can outrun and outclimb any threat, a plane engineered to be invulnerable. <laughs> Look at how it looks and it's insane. The Cold War locked the United States. I mean, around this time, F-15 that we saw, like how it looked, right? The SR, you know, all these like Sioux planes from Soviet Union, right? How they look. And from that, look at how Blackbird looks, like how different it is. If you're somebody known like what the fuck is that and imagine it going at full speed which i'm guessing they don't do full speed unless they have to that's the one thing i'll learn like something has like a you know ridiculous speed they're not going to do that unless they absolutely have to and they can't sustain that speed for long but even though averagely imagine if it's just like going full blast like five thousand miles per hour whatever that speed is and just somebody just seeing you know just the sight of it and looking like that imagine like what the fuck is that even human and Soviet Union into a tense struggle for global influence and control. Both sides poured enormous resources into military technologies, but getting an upper hand means knowing your opponent's next move. And in the 1950s, little was known about facilities deep within the Soviet Union. An extensive network of radar stations, surface-to-air missile sites, and interceptor air bases kept the Americans away. Until 1956, when U-2 spy planes began flying over the Soviet Union. Neither fast nor stealthy, U-2s had one critical advantage. At 70,000 feet, they could fly above Soviet air defenses. U.S. President Eisenhower was even assured. What is that plane that has a wingspan? Is that U-2? Right? Isn't that U-2? It has a, like an immense like a wingspan that is like nearly insanely hard to basically fly and land, right? Like there has to be constantly somebody has to be there just to guide them because the wing is that long. 
it goes like nearly like almost out, outside of the atmosphere you can see the moon and everything black sky even though it's a daylight but so that's the u2 right they also like um, <laughs> imagine in soviet times cold war times right soviet union times like american even though it's like a you know scary times for innovative people that was like a best time ever right like okay imagine if there was a plane that we could fly way high that they can touch us nearly touching the space because fuck it why not somebody like okay you know what i'll give you money for it do it and they just do it and <laughs> so insane soviet radars couldn't detect the u2 at such high altitudes but it turns out the americans were wrong the soviets had tracked the u2 since day one and it was only a matter of time before they'd be able to shoot one down simply flying high wasn't enough even before the U-2 began its surveillance missions, there were already plans underway to replace it. Because true impunity over Soviet airspace would need a combination of incredible speed, altitude, and stealth. And this led the Americans to explore some pretty radical spy plane concepts, like a ramjet-powered aircraft that would be deployed from the bottom of a supersonic B-58. But in 1959, the CIA chose Lockheed to develop the next generation of spy plane. Meanwhile, the U-2 continued to fly over the Soviet... A-12, A-12, A-12? Why have I heard of A-series plane? I think I've heard of A-series plane. Damn. Man, is Lockheed one of the most successful jet plane makers of all time? Because all the big names I can think of are probably Lockheed's, right? How rich are they? Seriously, from the day one, they've been making this shit. Union, but not for very long. Because in the spring of 1960, a Soviet surface-to-air missile finally managed to bring one down. The captured pilot and wreckage were paraded around the Soviet Union, used as proof of Western aggression. As tensions rose, now more than ever, the U.S. needed a replacement for the U-2. And what Lockheed developed would be unlike any aircraft ever built. A plane that nearly 60 years after its first flight remains the fastest air-breathing jet to ever fly. Lockheed's Seriously. highly classified spy plane would be known as the A-12. Originally used by the CIA for reconnaissance, the A-12 was also developed into an interceptor prototype armed with air-to-air -air missiles, along with a variant that could launch an unmanned reconnaissance drone. But it was the SR-71 Blackbird, a variant developed for the Air Force, that would go on to serve for decades, while earlier versions were quickly retired. The Blackbird could cruise at Mach... It doesn't make sense for this level of fast plane to be anything else, right? When you really think about it, any type of interceptor and things like, okay, that's like, it doesn't need to be that. And also like dogfights and things, also this kind of speed is not needed unless Soviet Union has one, which is like, why would you? So... This thing only can be just that, like surveillance and running away type of thing. Well, no, dropping nuke. If it can, I don't think it can do that. It's it can't have a uh, you know new payload. I don't know. They can probably modify. It. There is no other position for this fast plane, right? When you were a kid, you just think, what is the fastest like dog fighting type of plane that is? But that's usually not the requirement. Requirement is as far as fast as you can, but if it's like nimble enough, right? If it's agile enough to do all the things it wants to do, then the speed can be whatever you want to be. But if it like, you know, uh, negates that, like you can't be like agile because it's this fast, that's not going to work. 3.2, right near the edge of space and do it for hours on end. To achieve this, Lockheed's engineers had to innovate pretty much everything from scratch. To sustain such incredible speeds, the SR-71 and its predecessors were powered by engines often described as turbo ramjets. Below Mach 2, they functioned like conventional after-burning jet engines. But above that, they behaved more like ramjets, as an inlet cone adjusted to bypass air around the engine and directly into the afterburner. At Mach 3.2, the SR-71's exterior would heat up to beyond 500 degrees Fahrenheit, easily hot enough to soften aircraft aluminum. The Lockheed engineers used titanium for 92% of the aircraft. And in the 1960s, this required inventing entirely new fabrication technologies. Its unusual shape did more than just spook UFO enthusiasts. It helped really? reduce its radar signature, as did its special black paint, which earned the SR-71 its Blackbird name. Delivery problems eating into your profits? Yeah, I mean... <clears throat> 
this you know look at how blackbird looks like how flattened the you know uh, the tip of it is and everything when you look at the bomber right stealth bomber it also looks like this flat disc type of way right it also has this kind of like a black paint on top of it and everything full of his stealth needs right so yeah obviously ufo people were like oh the fuck there must have been ufo especially it's going like mark three plus or whatever return the sr-71 it's blackbird name The A-12 and SR-71 were first deployed over North Korea and Vietnam, where they were unsuccessfully targeted by over 800 surface-to-air missiles. But the spy plane never flew into Soviet airspace, at least not officially, because another shootdown over the Soviet Union would be catastrophic. So instead, the SR-71 flew along its borders, using its powerful side-looking radars and cameras to peer hundreds of miles into Soviet territory. And that frustrated the Soviets. In 1976, Viktor Belenko defected to the West by escaping the Soviet Union in his MiG-25. He described the frustration of trying to intercept Blackbirds. The MiGs the were Mach 3 capable, but only for a few minutes at a time, not for hours like the Blackbird. Nor could they climb to reach the SR-71's incredible altitude. Even their enormous R-40 missiles lack the guidance needed to strike the SR-71 head-on. For years... Yeah, MiG-25 is like, in very, you know, one thing I learned, MiG-25 is very specific areas. They can be like a deadly in a way, because how how much of a powerhouse they can be just, just by weight and speed, right? It can go to a certain speed for a very short time, but it can. It has a, like a real, a real firepower. And obviously in... Uh, people can obviously anybody who's gonna you know come across mig 25s would know all these things and would do things to avoid that so it's like what's the point of that it's like somebody just is like really powerful in in fighting type of thing one-on-one -on -one fighting type of thing some guy is really powerful but he has real blind spots and who's gonna fight him will know that so what's the point of it that kind of way but yeah mig 25 sometimes when you think it like yeah it's some scenarios it can be really deadly I mean, you know, compared to the, you know, like F-15 and things like that, right? In very specific scenarios. The Blackbirds were practically invulnerable. They could outfly and outclimb any threat. But by the 1980s, MiG-31s were roaming the skies. Equipped with sophisticated radar and long-range R-33 missiles, they posed a legitimate threat, as did a new generation of Soviet surface-to-air missiles. But the greatest threat to the Blackbird wasn't an enemy missile or jet, it was itself. No Blackbird was ever lost on a mission, but more than a third of the 50 built were destroyed in accidents. One literally disintegrated around its pilots. They were also enormously expensive to operate, each one siphoning about $300 million a year out of America's defense budget. A fleet of special aerial refuelers and a small... I mean, they were so so at the edge of things. They were un literally unreliable. Is that like it literally disintegrated around or someone? Like, that's insane. Like somebody's literally flying and is disintegrating around it. I mean, for the level they're talking about, it makes sense. But damn. All army of support and maintenance staff were needed just to keep these planes mission ready. And advances in spy satellites, aerial drones, and the SR-71's inability to deliver surveillance data in real time diminished some of the plane's utility. Add to that politics and infighting for defense budgets, and by the late 1980s, the SR-71's days were numbered. They were officially retired in 1998, with two sent to NASA for testing. The technology behind the A-12 and SR-71 is now well over 50 years old. Yet somehow these incredible planes still speak to us. Not about the past, but the future. Leaving us with a sense of wonder, unlike any other in aviation history. A few months ago, I launched my mustard site with Squarespace. It was... Wonder of what, what, could have, what we could have done going forward, but yeah. In the 70s, I think, like, in the 70s and even 80s, I think, like, once, like, Apollo missions was there, everything was about to change anyway, right? Because I'm pretty sure it was in the 70s, like, first Hubble-type telescope was, like, launched. Uh, they would look down spy telescope. By that point, it's like there was no need for things like this. I mean, obviously, uh, the range of this telescope were not as much because... You really need to litter the space like we have done now in order to have enough equipment to see everything. 
so it, it was launched in space to see very specific things but yeah plane is very like uh you know portable in that way like you can find so obviously blackboard was still used but satellites kind of like negated all that and then drone is just like yeah, drone can be just do anything right drone doesn't have a person inside so they can do many things that a manned plane can't do so by that point it's like why have a blackbird but yeah blackbird was so insanely powerful everybody knows that everybody knows what the fuck is blackbird do you remember blackbird plane just ask somebody that and they will fucking know regardless of the u.s or any part of the planet which is like insane but yeah this whole speed of blackbird and everything was way too crazy right the only thing that faster this, than this was, I think, was X-15, right? Like I said in the, you know, F-15 video, X-15, if I remember correctly, that NASA used and everybody was, which was like hypersonic speeds. Yeah, that was different. Well, well uh, that was SR-71 Blackbird, right? Yeah, SR-71 Blackbird, which is like A-15, A-15 right? Uh, Lockheed Martin is A-51 modified version of it. Yeah, this was invulnerable plane, apart from itself, I guess. It killed itself a lot of time, but yeah. If you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.